Welcome back everybody. We're gonna look at this a different dynamics problem and what the problem states is that the, at the instant theta is 35 degrees, the cam rotates with a clockwise angular velocity of three radians per second and an angular acceleration of three radians per second squared. Determine the magnitudes of velocity and the acceleration of the follower AB at the instant. The surface of the cam has a shape of a limicon or a limicon defined by r equals 200 plus 100 cosine theta and r is in millimeters. So this is actually going to be the, the follower AB, I forgot to label that. So this problem is actually pretty straightforward, but it might be a little confusing because now the equation r is the one rotating and not the vector r. So what I'm saying is that this is the whole equation of r at any given angle, but the equation itself is rotating relative to some fixed point. So therefore, the magnitude that we're looking for is this length right here at any given instant. And if we know that length, we could take time derivatives and find the radial acceleration and radial velocity, which will be the same as this arm, AB because arm AB can only move in the horizontal direction. So if we find the radial acceleration and the radial velocity, then we can find the velocity and acceleration of the arm AB. So I redefined R in this way, so I just defined the constants alpha and beta to make this problem a little bit more general. So R is gonna equal alpha plus beta times cosine of theta. So the time derivative of R, that's very, very simple. That's gonna be negative beta sine of theta and all this is going to be times by theta dot, or the angular velocity. And then let's take the time derivative again to find the acceleration. So I'm going to pull out the negative beta, and then do the product rule between sine theta and theta dot. So the derivative of sine theta is going to be cosine theta times theta dot, and then multiplied by this other theta dot, so that's going to be theta dot squared. And then I'm going to add that to theta double dot times the sine of theta. So this equation right here is a function of theta, so we could plug that in. That's going to be 281.915 millimeters. This right here is a function of theta and theta dot, so we could plug those values in as well. And that's going to be negative 172.073 millimeters per second. And then r double dot is a function of theta, theta dot, and theta double dot. So if we plug those values in, we get negative 909.310 millimeters per second squared. So we're gonna look at our acceleration formula in polar coordinates. So what I'm saying is that this is gonna be the acceleration vector. If you don't know where this comes from, please check out the derivation on my channel. It's pretty straightforward, and it describes the acceleration in terms of the radial component and the e theta component. So this acceleration vector has two components, the er component, which is in the radial direction, and the e theta component, which is in the theta direction. So if we look back on this diagram, if this is the instant when theta equals 35 degrees, then the acceleration vector is gonna have a radial and theta component. So the radial direction would be pointing in that direction. So this is going to be, so I'll do it up here. So this is going to be in the direction of er. And E theta is going to point in the perpendicular direction of ER and also point in the direction of motion. So since the cam is rotating in a clockwise fashion, the motion is going in that general direction. So we can say that e, e theta is perpendicular to ER and points downward. So another way to figure that out, if you do the cross product between ER and E theta, its rotation is going to go in that direction, and that, ma that is the same as this direction. If you do the cross product from here to here, you're going to have the same rotation as the cam. Therefore, this is the correct orientation for ER and E theta. So if we draw that E theta on this diagram, that's going to be that. And if we're only concerned about the acceleration and the velocity of the rod AB, and we know that AB only has horizontal velocity and horizontal acceleration because it is restrained in movement due to this slot that constricts its movement in the vertical direction. So therefore, it can only accelerate in the horizontal direction. So when we plug in the values in this acceleration vector, this will give us the acceleration of the given point on the path, on the Lamicon or whatever you want to call it. But we know that the acceleration of the point on the cam is not the same acceleration as the rod AB. 
and that's simply because the point on the cam has the ability to rotate in the E theta direction as well as translate in the radial direction. But the rod AB does not have that same degree of freedom. So what I'm saying is that the only acceleration and only velocity that pertains to AB is in the radial direction. So the acceleration of AB is simply going to be this component only. So this is going to be R double dot minus R theta dot squared in the ER direction. It does not have an E theta component because rod AB cannot rotate with the cam because of this restriction over here. So this will be the acceleration of AB. And then the same thing for the velocity vector, that's going to be R dot because R dot only pertains to the velocity in the radial direction. It does not say anything about its rotational tendency. So therefore the velocity vector of AB is going to be just R dot when theta equals 35 degrees. So we could plug these values in to get the acceleration of AB. And since we're not really concerned about the direction, we could just look at the magnitude. So we could just plug in these values and ignore this ER vector. So this is the value we get for the acceleration of AB, which is 3,446.545 millimeters per second squared. And then the velocity of AB is simply the same as R dot. So this is going to be negative 172.073 in the ER direction. But since we're only concerned with the magnitude, we can say that the velocity of AB is simply going to be 172.073 millimeters per second. Okay, I'm going to quickly recap on what we just did. So since we were told to find the velocity and acceleration of AB, we just use the equation R to find the acceleration and velocity at any given instant with respect to theta. So that's what we did, time derivatives of R right here and find the each value for R, R dot, and R double dot. The next thing we notice is that this equation is actually rotating with time. So this length R is the only thing we're concerned with because this length will determine the acceleration and velocity of AB. So I tried to draw this picture a moment later, and this is still the length we're concerned with, but as you can see that the R vector has changed a little bit. It has gone in a little bit, and the way that R changes with time will be the same as how the follower AB changes with time. So we're not necessarily looking at the R vector when it's over here. We're only concerned with the vector r that is horizontal or parallel with ab. So this might be a little confusing because the equation itself is rotating and not the vector r is rotating, which is what we've been dealing with. So that might be a little misconception that some people might have in this problem. The next thing we did was use this acceleration vector equation that we derived earlier. And we noticed that the, this acceleration vector is mapping out the acceleration of r as theta rotates. But as we said before, we don't want to look at r as it rotates with theta. We want to look at the distance from the pivot to the follower a. So therefore, we don't have to look at the e theta component because the follower ab doesn't have any rotation tendencies due to the constraints of the problem. So we're only concerned with this part of the vector, not this part. We, don't, we can completely ignore this part. Therefore, the acceleration of AB is simply just the radial component of R at that given instant. So the acceleration is defined by this equation, and the velocity is just the velocity in the radial direction, and that's what we found earlier by taking the time derivative of R. So we can say these two are basically the same. So then we plugged in the values for both equations and we got an acceleration of 3446.545 millimeters per second squared and we found a velocity of 172.073 millimeters per second. So hopefully that was helpful. I put this problem in here just because it changed your idea of how polar coordinates work because we're used to having the r vector change with time, not the whole equation change with time. So I threw that in here, although this problem is fairly straightforward, it was just a little tricky that you have to notice that E theta is not actually a component for the follower AB. So that's it for curvilinear motion with polar coordinate examples in this playlist. 
Um, if you want more practice, there'll be more problems in my More Dynamics Problems playlist on my channel. So be sure to check that out. Uh, there probably won't be too many problems as of now, but in the future, I'll, I'm hoping to develop more problems and put those problems into that other playlist. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.